All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today, I thought we'd go through the best estate cars you can buy for £10,000. So let me go to autotrader.co.uk and let's start shopping. So let me take out all of the parameters here. Right, so we want any make, any model, but crucially, we want body type, estate, and then price up to £10,000. And we'll do from, we'll eliminate all the, all the rubbish. We will go from £6,000. So, what have we got? Alfa Romeo, you could... Oh, that's a good idea, actually. That's never been said in the same sentence as an Alfa Romeo, has it? The 159 Sport Wagon. Hens Teeth TI Sport Wagon. He's not wrong there, is he? I couldn't recommend one of those, to be honest, but they are good looking. Right, let's, let's look a little bit more sensibly. Audi, they do a solid estate car. So we've got either the A4 Allroad, the A4 Avant, the A6 Allroad, the A6 Avant, and then we've got the performance ones as well. So let's look at the A4 Avant. What can you buy? Something like this, for example. Now this is a two liter TDI S line, which looks very smart. Now it's an automatic, which a lot of people prefer, including me, but this is a twin clutch S-tronic box. So you need to make sure it's been serviced every 40,000 miles. That is a good looking car though, that. It's had a tow bar, so you want to bear in mind that it has probably been pulling something. Although, no, they're twin electric, so that has had a caravan on the back. That might put me off, actually. 96,000 miles, two litre diesel, you want to make sure it's had a timing belt replacement. And, like I say, at least one or two gearbox services. You could even go for something like a black edition. Now, these look great. You get the rotor style alloys, and you get all of the chrome bits deleted. So they're in gloss black instead of chrome. I just think that looks really good. I'm not usually a fan of red cars like that, but with all the black bits on, it looks really sporty. Again, same engine, except this one's manual. So no gearboxes to service, but they have a clutch and a dual mass flywheel. So when the clutch needs to be replaced, you're talking 800 pounds for a clutch and a new dual mass flywheel. When it starts to go, you'll hear it vibrating. That looks very clean, actually. It's got heated seats. And the good thing with these, the road tax is cheap. So this will be about 20 pounds, I think. Let's have a look. Oh, 135, that's more than I thought. I think it's perhaps the facelift models then, which are cheaper. So something like an A4 you can't go wrong with. The A4 Allroad is also very good. I did a video on one of those recently. See, I think that looks really good. You've got the wide wheel arches. I don't like the fact it's put a different reg plate on that looks a bit chavvy, but I think that's quite a handsome car. It's a little bit higher than a standard A4 Avant, so, and it's obviously Quattro four-wheel drive. So that thing can pretty much go anywhere. But again, it's the same engine, so you need to bear in mind cam belts. And if you go for an also, make sure it's had its gearbox serviced. Now my mate has just bought an A6 Avant, 2013. And I think it's a really good family car, this. So his is like this, 2013 63. This is a black edition. But how good does that look? You've got the LED DRLs there, rotor style wheels, privacy glass. It's a really good looking car, that. You've got to bear in mind one of the other common issues, I've just, that's just reminded me, the rear wiper blade. Sometimes the rear wiper motor can fail. It's quite a common issue on all Audis, actually. So you want to make sure that that works because it will cost you a couple hundred pounds for a replacement. That, again, is automatic. But, oh yeah, that needs servicing as well. It's an S-Tronic. They do a bi-turbo, which has a ZF gearbox which uses just a standard torque converter, which is a bit tougher than the S-Tronic. That is a three liter turbo diesel V6, so that will fly, but you need to make sure it's had regular oil changes, otherwise the timing chain will start to rattle. I'd go for something like that, personally. If I had a 10 grand budget, granted it's done 129, but it's not that high, is it? 220 pounds a year to tax, and it'll do 40 miles per gallon. That's not bad at all, is it? Then you've got the A6 all road, which I did a video with recently, and now I'm a big fan of these. I think they, they look really classy. Right, let's change brand then. In fact, hang on a second. What am I doing? There is one A6 Avant, S6 Avant. Look at that. Now this has got a naturally aspirated 5.2 litre V10. I've never driven one of these, but I'd really like to get my hands on one. So let's change brand then. The other obvious one would be BMW. So you've got the three series or the five series. So for 10,000 pounds, you're gonna get yourself something like that. That's an SE. I'm not sure whether you'd want the SE, to be honest. It looks a bit boring, doesn't it, with its tiny wheels. There we go, an M Sport. So this is a 2013 62 Reg, 320 diesel M Sport. 
That's a good looking car that. It'll be really nice to drive, it's got the new style steering wheel. I would gladly run around in something like that. You're better off though with BMWs, with the three litre in my mind. There's nothing really wrong with the two, they're very good on fuel, but I would rather have, although that's a Cat S, I'd rather have something like that personally with a three litre diesel. Let's have a look at five series then. So, 10 grand will get you something like a 2011, 2012, with about 100,000 miles on the clock. Again, I don't like the reg plate. I'm not a big fan of those wheels either, and I hate wind deflectors there. Hmm, that looks a bit chaffed up, that one. That looks a bit more subtle, doesn't it? Yeah, 130 on the clock. A lot of these cars are used by business people, so the majority of the mileage usually is just up and down the motorway. That's the kind of thing you want to buy. That looks good, that. Okay, so, change brand again. Chevrolet, no. Chrysler, no. Citroen. See, that to me just looks very boring. I know it's only done 40,000 miles, but... Hmm. They always ride well, the C5s. It will be quite comfortable, that, and very roomy, but no, I'd rather have a BM. We'll discount Citroen, then. Dacia, no. Fiat, no. Ford, you're talking Mondeos here, which are a bit bland, aren't they? I mean, I know this one's only done 23,000 miles, but what a boring looking car that is. Non-metallic blue. Mm, the inside's okay. I always found the steering wheel was too big on this era of Mondeo. That might just be me, but... Mm, it's got a fair bit of kit on it, though. Sat nav and everything. No, what a, what a dull car that is. Forget it. Looks a bit better in black, doesn't it? I've seen one thing here which has put me off straight away. That is the power shift gearbox. You need to service those every 40,000 miles or something. They're just, they're a twin clutch box and they're quite unreliable. So I think we can discount those as well. So, so far we're looking at either A4s or A6s or three series or five series. Honda, the Honda Civic Tour is quite a good car, actually. I don't think it's the best looking, although that colour blue is quite nice. It's a bit sort of funny looking from the back, I think. It just looks a bit strange. But the 1.6 diesel will do about 60 miles per gallon. And if you go for a good spec, I mean, look how those, look how those seats fold up. They're really clever, Honda. If you go for a good spec, it'll have everything on it that you could possibly wish for. So that wouldn't be too bad, would it? You're talking zero road tax, all that sort of stuff. Oh, 20 quid road tax, so it's neither here nor there, is it? And look at that, 65 miles per gallon. What else have we got? Hyundai, the i30. Uh, not i30, i40. That's quite a good looking car. In black, it is a little bit hersey, isn't it? The clutches are a bit of a weak spot on the i30. Uh, i40. Why do I keep calling it i30? The clutches are a bit of a weak point on the i40. But I just think they're quite a good, fairly attractive, practical, reliable car. The 1.7 diesel is a chain-driven engine, and it rarely goes wrong. And for 10 grand, you're going to get yourself something like that. 2016 with 70,000 miles on the clock. Jaguar. Let's have a look at this. Can you buy a decent XF? Oh, let's have a look at X-types. How nice is that? I love the X-type estate. Especially the post-facelift with the mesh grille and the indicators in the wing mirrors. Sorry, guys. I should have given you a, a nerd alert at the start of this, shouldn't I? That's a diesel auto as well, which is quite rare. The 2.2 diesel... Deal. The 2.2 diesel is a little bit coarse. Oh, look at this. I don't know why I'm looking at this. This is a 3 litre V6 Sport Premium all wheel drive. That'll only do about 20 miles per gallon, but how cool is that? It's got the split rims. That is just class, isn't it? Absolute class. Right, I'm getting sidetracked here. Let's have a look at XFs. So, £10,000 would buy you. Oh, they're good value, aren't they, these days? Look at that. That is a 2013, so that's the facelift one from 2012 onwards with the LED lights. £10,000, 2.2 diesel, which is a bit rough and ready to be fair, but it is what it is. And it's the R-Sport model. What a good looking car that is. And £10,000. Now that has done 100,000 miles. I think that looks far better than any of the BMWs and Audis I've shown you. Well, straight away, no surprise, but my money would be going on that. So, the annual tax is only £165 a year. That's not bad, is it? And 46 miles per gallon. Right, well, I'd forgotten about the XF, actually, so that's thrown a bit of a spanner in the works. Excuse me for interrupting, but I've got to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark, who are a VPN service provider. They basically keep you safe while you're online. Whether you're doing online shopping or online banking, they just help to keep you and your details protected. It also hides your IP address, so cyber thieves can't view it. 
Surfshark's also handy if you watch a lot of streaming sites such as Netflix, because you can use it to change your location settings so that it thinks you're in a different country or territory. You know, sometimes if you're trying to watch your favourite American TV show, say, in the UK, sometimes it won't let you. But with Surfshark, you can change your location settings so that it thinks you're in the US, then all of a sudden you can watch your favourite shows and movies. It really is that simple. It also blocks malware, phishing, ads and other kinds of nastiness which in turn can speed up your bandwidth and make your device run much more smoothly. You can download the app very easily from the App Store and you can use it on an unlimited number of devices. It's not expensive either. We all put a lot of information out there these days so it's crucial that you're protected. Especially if you frequently use public Wi-Fi spots such as at fast food restaurants, airports, train stations, that sort of thing. The last thing I want to do is get my credit card details stolen or bank account hacked into but since I've been using Surfshark, touch wood, that just hasn't happened. If you click the link below in the video description, which is surfshark.deals forward slash hypecortos, they'll give you three months totally free and 83% off. And we're talking a couple of quid a month here, so it's not some big expensive commitment. So if you do online banking or online shopping or just want to feel more protected when you're online, definitely check out Surfshark. Right, back to estate cars. Kia, what could you buy? An Optima? That's not a bad looking car actually, is it? So that's a 2017 Kia Optima 2. So that's fairly low spec actually. It's only got 80,000 miles, 1.7 diesel. These are really reliable, I can personally vouch for these. It's a bit grubby, isn't it that? Sort of on the same kind of lines as a Mondeo, isn't it? It's just a bit of a, bit of a workhorse. There's nothing very luxurious about it. Or the Cedar State. Now you can't really go wrong with a Cedar State. Now again, I think that's a good looking car. 2014 automatic, only done 28. Because it's quite a compact estate, it isn't the most spacious, but they do have everything on them. Again, chain driven engine, reliable gearboxes, you could do far worse than that. And you're going to have low running costs, so £180 a year to tax and, wow, that's, that's worse than the XF, who'd have thought it? That's sealed it then, XF it is. Right, what else, what else? Mini, mm, I wouldn't bother. Mazda, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go anywhere near a Skyactiv diesel Mazda. Mercedes-Benz, let's have a look here. So we're going to have a C-Class or an E-Class, basically. That looks like an awful lot of car, doesn't it, that? I'd gladly run something like that. That's a new shaped C-Class, 2.1 diesel, the interiors are lovely, the infotainment's a bit fiddly, but you'll soon master it, I suppose. What a nice car that is. That's £10,000, and it will be very frugal, this. £30 a year to tax, 50 miles per gallon around town. Hmm. And you less compliant. 109,000 miles, but if it's got history, that wouldn't bother me in the slightest. Or you could get the older shape one with less miles. So something like that, for example. 2009, but it's only done 40. Which are nice miles, aren't they? Hmm. I'd rather have the newer shape one, to be honest. I'd rather have a higher mileage, newer shape one than a lower mileage, older shape. E class. So. We're going to get something like the beige coloured one that I filmed with a few months ago. Which, they're great cars really. Especially if you can go for the 3 litre. The 3 litre diesel V6 are excellent. Like that, for example. E350 V6 diesel. It is a bit hearsy, isn't it, in black? But, quite good looking that. Hmm, that's not a bad idea, is it, that? Oh, has that got the... Ah, that's the 7 seat with the rear facing seats. That's unusual. They're lovely to drive, nice to be in. You could do far worse than that. Let's look at running costs then. So you're talking 330 to tax, it's a bit higher, and only 35 miles per gallon round town. Not the best we've seen, is it? But again, for 10,000 pounds, it's quite a lot of car, that. Don't think you're gonna get yourself a new shape one. Oh, you can actually. It's only an SE though, but. For example, that's the newer shape one with the badge in the grill. That's 2013, 2.1 diesel. That's a lot of car for the money. That's only £165 a year to tax, and it'll do 44 round town. That's a bit more like it, isn't it? Hmm. Again, all the, well, most of the cars I've looked at so far have been diesel, so you're going to face things like EGR valve issues, DPFs, and possibly turbo issues, but you need to service them on time, run them on premium fuel at least every other fill-up, tell them for a long, steady run every now and then, and keep your fingers crossed. Oh, look at these. These are such a, such a good-looking car. The CLS Estate, or Shooting Brake as it's known. I'd have something like that. I think that's a great car. How pretty is that? So that has got the 2.1 litre turbo diesel, which is chain driven. It's an AMG Sport model, so you get nicer wheels, nicer interior. 
Now, because it's the shooter brake and it's got this sloped rear end, it isn't the most practical, which for an estate car, that might be, uh, be not what you're looking for, but it is good looking. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Hmm, I didn't know you could get those for that sort of money. Or a CLA, no, I don't really like the CLA estate. A bit funny looking, isn't it? Fugly, I think they call it. Nissan, no. Peugeot, mm, no. Renault, no merci. Saab, ah, these are really good, you know. That sounds like that sounds like a lot of money for one of those, but the old sport wagon, I think, are great. Yeah, that's a lot of money, really. Seven thousand seven hundred ninety-five pounds for something that's no longer in production. That just sounds too dear. But they are a good-looking car, aren't they? Look at that. And that two-litre turbo engine flies. Whenever you go to Sweden, you see things like that all the time. We just don't buy them here. Right, now we can rule out Saab then, I think. Well, we're getting to the end of the list already. Subaru, the Legacy Outback, is a really good car. Do they still call it a Legacy Outback, or is it just an Outback? Might just be an Outback. The diesel's a bit clattery, the petrol's a bit thirsty, but it's a bit of class, I think. You really rarely see them as well. Something like that for nine grand is a two litre diesel SE premium four wheel drive, 2016 with 115,000 miles. One owner, as they probably all are. Running costs 180 pounds a year to tax, 40 miles per gallon around town. Hmm, that's an interesting kind of left field choice if you want one. And what else, legacy? See, I think that looks quite cool. It's getting on a bit now, it's 2010, but it's a 2.5 GT. That's a cool car, that. I approve. It's just interesting. I can't remember the last time I saw one of those. Right, let's look a bit more sensibly. Toyota. You could get something like a an Auris Estate if you're planning on doing Ubers. It is a proper Uber car, that. Or an Aventis Estate. Now, the diesel Aventis I will just avoid because they're not very good. But the petrol Aventis will run forever. If I can find a petrol, they're all diesel. It's a bit dull, that, isn't it? Let me, let me get off this, a bit boring. Right, we've got three left, all of these. Vauxhall, Volkswagen, and Volvo. So, Vauxhall, we have got, now don't laugh here, but I think the Insignia Estate is a really good looking car. I mean, look at this, for example. I had one of these a few years ago in stock, and it had an issue with the DPF. So my mechanic fixed it, but said, well, they, they advised me to run it for a bit. So I filled it full of fuel, and I did two or 300 miles in it, over the course of a week or two, and I got really attached to it. It was an elite model like this, so it had every conceivable extra. And wait till you see the back, I just think they're a really good looking car. That might not be the best angle actually, but they are, trust me. There we go, that's a better angle I think. They're a good looking car and you don't see that many of them about. I'd probably go for the 2 litre diesel rather than the 1.6 because it's just got a bit more grunt. Right, hang on a minute, we've missed Skoda here, haven't we? And Seat. I've, I've missed a whole row. Right. Let me go back because the Seat Leon Estate, I think, is a really good looking car. I sold one to a mate of mine and every time I saw it, his was an FR diesel. And I just thought it looked really good. Let me see if I can find the equivalent model. Okay, so the closest then is like this because it was white as well. So that is an FR TDI. So I think that's a good looking estate car. That's automatic as well. Now, if you do go for a DSG Auto, make sure you service it. But it had all the stuff that you'd expect, like DAB, Bluetooth, all that sort of thing. I like the flat bottom steering wheel. It's not the best to use, but it's good to look at. And I like, particularly, if it's got the light pack, the LED lights, the DRLs, they look really cool. And the running costs are superb. So you're talking 135 pounds a year to tax. I'm pretty sure the manual was only 30 quid. I think that might be higher because it's an automatic. I'd avoid one like that in a in a non-metallic blue, because that just looks drab, doesn't it? Go for one in a good colour. I'd also, if you're gonna buy, this kind of goes against everything I always say, but if you're gonna buy an estate car, I'd probably go for a diesel, because it's that kind of car that you're gonna do road trips in and drive long distances, so you want the extra economy. I'm always very anti-diesel, but for this kind of car, it does make more sense. Skoda. Now, now we're cooking. Let's look at the Skoda Superb estate. Now, I love the Superb. It is a bit of a granddad mobile, but I can't help but like it. Will 10 grand buy you anything decent? Let's look at this. So nine and a half grand, and we've got a two litre TDI SE business estate, 2016, with 116,000 miles on the clock. 
The mileage wouldn't frighten me on one of those, just make sure it's had its cam belt done and if it's automatic make sure it's been serviced. I really like those. And the legroom in the back is ridiculous. It's like an S-Class limousine. In fact, I think, it, I can't remember now, don't quote me on this, but I'm sure the legroom in the back of a Superb is actually better than you get in an S-Class limo. And the boot's huge, the interior's really nice. I'd have that in a heartbeat. I've got no reason for it, but when has that ever stopped me? So the Superb, now let's have a look at the Octavia. Because I also like the Octavia, especially if you can get a VRS diesel. I don't know whether you'll get one for, for 10 grand, but let's have a look. Oh, you could get the Scout. That's a cat N, but the Scout, the Octavia Scout, is like the all-road version. So it's a bit higher up and it's all-wheel drive. Now, this is just a boring 1.6 diesel SE, but it's got the colour going for it, at least. That's a nice, practical family car, that, isn't it? Two cup holders, six-speed manual, steering wheel controls, Bluetooth, DAB, all that sort of stuff. And it will do... I mean, look at this, for example. It's done 90,000 miles and it's been sold by a Skoda main dealer. Just shows you they've got confidence in it, doesn't it? It's zero to tax and it'll do, look at that, 64 miles per gallon around town, 80 on a run. You just can't beat that. Personally though, I'd go for a two litre. Pay a little bit extra in road tax and fuel, but you get something with a bit more, a bit more poke. Like that, for example. I really rate Skoda, or Skoda. That's a good car, that. Right, what else then? I don't like the Fabia estate though, actually, because that's a bit... I think all those kind of small estates look a bit awkward. So, Volkswagen, so we have got the Golf, the Passat, hmm, Polo, right, forget that. The Golf, again, like I've just said, the smaller estate cars I always think look a bit funny looking. Although that's not a bad looking car, is it? The, that's the 2017 Golf Estate 1.5 petrol. That's quite a good looking car, actually. I know they're probably not real exhaust, but they do look quite smart. Hmm, that's well, petrol though, so I think I'd rather have a two litre diesel if they do. Uh, I don't think they do a two litre diesel, do they? Oh, there's one actually. What am I talking about? Oh, that's a Passat. Hang on a minute. Ah, uh, Eddie, that's why. What an idiot. They do do a two litre diesel. Right, so this is a 2015 65 range two litre TDI and it's DSG. So again, make sure it's been serviced. No, it's not DSG. I hate that. They put the wrong picture there. How amateurish. They put pictures of a Mondeo there. It is easily done. I've done this myself, but it does look quite amateurish. That's the inside of a ST of some description. Oh, there we go. Is that the car? There we go. So it's all nicely done inside. Not bad at all. Right, let's look at the Passat then, because now this is the one that I would go for. Granted, this has done 113,000 miles, but like I say, I guarantee that will have just done 40,000 miles a year up and down the motorway. And what a good looking car that is. They're a bit vanilla. They're a bit magnolia, aren't they? They're a bit bland, but solid, dependable, and it won't draw any unwanted attention to you. So it is quite good looking that in a funny sort of way. The inside looks nice. They're almost like the seats you get in a Passat CC. Why didn't they do a Passat CC estate? Can you answer me that? Let's see if anybody's rendered one. Passat CC estate. Spelled wrong. They didn't do one, did they? PWCC it was called, wasn't it? No. Ah, they do the Artian, don't they? I don't think you've got one of those for 10 grand though. Right, and last but not least, let's head over to Sweden. Volvo, okay, right, we've got plenty of choice here. So, what kind of 850 can you get for 10? Nine grand, look at that. 850 2.3 R, surely it's not worth nine grand. Surely not. Right, let's go back. Wasting time here. 940. That's cool in a funny sort of way. I wouldn't have it myself, but it is quite <laughs> it's quite cool that isn't it in a funny sort of way. Right, hang on. We've got the V50 then, which is a good looking car. The trouble often with Volvos or the 2-litre diesel Volvo is they have issues with the EGR cooler. Now that can cost you about £800 for replacement. I've had this many times. It's quite nice that, isn't it? In an understated Scandinavian sort of way. I mean, that one, for example, is a 2-litre petrol with only 32,000 miles on the clock. It sounds like a lot of money, really, for a 9-year-old, 11-year-old car, but it has only done 30,000 miles. You just know that'll last for years and years, don't you? Very practical and perfectly reliable. 
The only thing is that two litre petrol will be a bit thirsty. Although having said that, it is ULES compliant. So swings and roundabouts, I suppose. The V60, again, is a good looking car, isn't it? Look at that one. That's a 2.4 D5, that's the one to go for. And that's the R design, so it looks sportier. Now that is a good looking car. I like the wheels, I like the privacy glass, I like the twin exhaust. That's very cool actually. I like that. Again, they have a timing belt which needs to be replaced. That one's been done. That one's done 86,000 miles and it's a Geartronic, which I think use a, an ASIM Warner gearbox, which are perfectly reliable if you service them. So every 80, 100,000 miles, make sure you change the fluid. But apart from that, change the timing belt and service the gearbox and change the oil of the engine every eight or 10,000 miles. You've got yourself a good car there. Let's look at V70s then. Now the V70 is a big barge, but I do like them. That one, for example, so that's a 2012 done 84. It's a D5 and it's an SE. So, I mean, look at those seats. You could fall asleep just looking at those seats, couldn't you? They always, for some reason, seem to be missing the Volvo badge from the middle there. It's a sticker, which always falls off. And they are huge. The boot space is massive. And that 2.4 diesel is like the engine from a tank. So 10,000 pounds will get you a decent one with 60 or 80,000 miles on the clock. What else? An XC70, let's have a look at these. Now I quite like these, but given the choice, I would rather have the A6 all road, personally. Let's have a look at this one, for example. So this is 10,000 pounds, it's a 2011 D5 SE, and it's in a perfect color there for that background, isn't it? The other good thing about owning a car like that is you'll get let into any national trust establishment without even showing your badge. They'll see that in olive green and just know that you're a member. Right, well, I think we've looked at all the estate cars then, haven't we? Well, I hope that was helpful. I personally, if I was looking for one for about £10,000, I've got half a dozen options there. I think any one of those I'd be quite happy with. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.